couple of months ago, I did my first video sharing some of the most important lifestyle changes that you could start doing in order to increase your HRV. And this is part two of this series, so I'm very excited to start sharing these with you. Nothing in this video is to be used as medical advice. Always consult with your doctor, especially if you have a medical condition. All right, so the first thing that we can focus on is meal timing, particularly the last meal before you're asleep. Now, what I'd like you to try and experiment with is not have any food whatsoever between three to four hours before sleep. Why is this important? It's important because when we go to sleep, our body and physiology are going through these processes that help restore and repair and get you ready for the next day. What we don't want is your body and physiology using precious energy resources to digest that burrito that you had the night before. So it's very important to respect your circadian rhythm by not having meals so late. Now, in order for us to start working with our circadian rhythm versus against our circadian rhythm, a lot of experts recommend as soon as you get up to go outside and get your eyes accustomed to the sun. Now, the problem is uh, if you're like me and you live in a place that's really foggy and cold and unpleasant in the morning like San Francisco, that's just not a great experience. So what I've been doing is I have these light therapy glasses that you turn on, you see these lights, and you just wear them in the mornings as you go about your morning. It's so great. And people look at you funny. It's, it's fabulous. Now, in the evenings, it's going to be the reverse process. In the evenings, we want to not have blue light exposure to our eyes. So in the evenings, you've probably heard this before, but you're going to wear these kind of glasses with a nice orange tint. And that's going to allow your melatonin levels to be higher in the evening so that you can fall asleep and stay asleep easier. Next to breathing, drinking water might be just one of the best biohacks of all time. Water is necessary for temperature regulation, delivering energy to your cells, preventing infection, improving your mood. The list goes on, so it's also great for your HRV. Now, the recommendation is approximately half an ounce to an ounce per pound of body weight. So you'll have to kind of play around with it. And one thing that you may not know is that if you have a white tongue when you stick it out of your mouth and look in the mirror, you might be dehydrated. So something to look out for. Now, if you're interested in going the supplement route in order to increase your HRV, a couple of good ones for you to investigate are a good quality fish oil as well as magnesium. Now, the kind of magnesium that I like and that has been great for my sleep in particular is magnesium bisglycinate. So check that out. There's an old saying out there that goes something like this. If you're holding on to anger, the only person you're hurting is yourself. And I could definitely resonate with this. There was an interesting study done where they had people just imagine themselves forgiving the person that hurt them, just mentally. They didn't actually call them or let them know that the other person is being forgiven. And during that time, their heart rate variability went up. So something else to consider. It is said that children laugh approximately 300 times a day, where adults laugh 17 times a day which means children are getting all of these good neurochemicals associated with laughter and all the stress relief associated with laughter while we're not. So what can we do about this? We can listen to comedies in the background or even better, we can join live sessions of laughter yoga on Skype, which is something I've been doing for about 10 something years. And it's just been one of the best practices of my life. So. I highly encourage you to investigate this. Now let's talk about the lifestyle factors that are hurting your HRV, increasing your stress, and let's see if you can consider ways to reduce or eliminate them. So the first being smoking. I know you've heard it all before, but it is hurting your HRV. And something to consider is people have had some good luck with nicotine kind of gum. 
And actually, fun fact, nicotine is a smart drug that a lot of people use. Next, I want to talk about our careers and jobs. Now, I know there is no perfect job. There's always going to be some negatives with the positives. But if you're constantly working overtime, if your commute is long and sucky, and if your coworkers just suck, that's lowering your HRV and raising your stress levels. Did you know that living in a hot climate could be hurting your heart rate variability? Right, because heat is a stressor. And some of us are more sensitive to this stressor than others. Now, I know what you're thinking. I go to the sauna, I feel amazing, I love the heat, and I agree with you. Now, there is a difference between being in a sauna for 20 minutes and then being in a sauna your whole day. Did you know that people have cured their anxiety and depression simply by limiting their news consumption? The media companies are super good at keeping us hooked, at keeping us scared, and in constant fight or flight mode. So let's make sure that we're finding that balance between staying informed and just doom scrolling all day. And similar idea goes to social media consumption. If we're constantly scrolling and comparing yourself to others, that would be a good time to step back and think, do I feel fulfilled, good, nurtured by this activity, or is this making me feel like beep? Does your sleep feel consistently unrefreshing? Do you wake up with very little energy in the morning? You might have sleep apnea, especially if you're somebody who snores. Now, one way to check this is by installing an app called Snore Lab, which will actually record all the sounds in your room over the night, and then you can play it back and see whether you are snoring. Now, if you do have sleep apnea, that is something you want to get taken care of as soon as possible because consistently depriving your vital organs of oxygen could lead to health issues down the line. Now, one awesome hack that may help is to make sure that you are breathing through your nose throughout the night. Now, all you really have to do is get a piece of tape, medical tape, and just put a tiny piece over your lips like this. I know it looks silly, but it works magic and it'll make sure that you are not mouth breathing versus nose breathing. All right, guys, hope that was helpful. Let us know in the comments if you plan to incorporate any of these lifestyle changes and I will see you in the next one.